imagine we have a plasmid TDL10 that contains a gene, gene X, which spans from 1800 base pairs to 2000 base pairs of our plasmid. We are interested in subcloning gene X into another common cloning vector PBR322. This vector contains a gene for tetracycline, tetracycline resistance or TET. TET gene contains a multiple cloning site in which we can easily subclone our gene X. This will disrupt tetracycline resistance gene and help us identify our clone. So let's see how to do it with serial cloner. So click open plasmid TDL10. Here you go. You have the text pane which gives you the name of the plasmid, the size of the plasmid, type whether it's DNA or RNA, whether it's circular or linear. And if you click on features, you will see that our molecule is pretty simple. It has gene X, gene Y and canamycin resistance gene. Gene X spans from 1800 to 2000 base pairs. If you go down and hit graphics map, you will get all the information in graphic format. Here you see a lot of these light yellow boxes. These basically depict all the restriction enzymes which are single cutters. Here is our gene. If you double click on it, it will mark the position on graphics map and it will also light the sequence in graphics pane. For example, here the sequence which is highlighted in light blue is our gene that starts with ATG or the start codon and ends with TAA or the stop codon. So let's click open the other molecule that we have which is plasmid PBR322. This is the text pane which gives the name of the plasmid and its size which is 4361 base pairs. It's a DNA which is circular and these are all the features of the plasmid. It is very commonly used for cloning purposes. If we go down and hit graphics map, we can see the graphics of this plasmid and all these yellow boxes depict restriction enzymes which cut at a single site within the vector. So let's close the text pane and now we can rearrange the graphics panels the way we wish. So let's take a closer look at the TET gene which gives resi resistance against tetracycline antibiotic. All these yellow boxes, so this is the TET gene which is in the clockwise direction and above that all the yellow boxes depict restriction enzymes which are single cutters and that cut TET gene at a single site. We can use one of these to clone our gene X. These are like EcoR5, BAMH1, SPH1, etc. And if we clone gene X in TET gene, it effectively splits TET gene and such a construct will no longer give resistance again against tetracycline antibiotic which can be effectively exploited to differentiate from the parent plasmid. So let's look at the double cutters in our donor plasmid which is TDL10. All the double cutters are depicted in dark orange boxes. So let's get rid of the unique sites and now we are left with only bright orange boxes which are restriction enzymes that cut at least twice within the plasmid. This is our gene X spanning from 1800 to 2000 base pairs. And these are the enzymes which cut within and around gene X. For example, PCT1 which cuts at 1747 and BAMH1 that cuts at 1781 which is just before the start of gene X at 1800 base pairs. There is another BAMH1 site that cuts at 2011 which is just after the end of the gene at 2000 base pairs. That is effectively if you cut the plasmid with BAMH1, it will excise the entire gene X. And we can use a possible BAMH1 site within the TET gene of our recipient plasmid PBR322 to ligate gene X. 
So let's see if we have BAMH1 site in TED gene. And there we go, we do have one at 375 base pair. So it's a single cutter, there is a single BAMH1 site within the TED gene, which we can use to, to clone our gene X. So click on construct at the top panel, which will open a new window, build a construct. At this point of time, you don't need graphics panel, so you can minimize them. Now, build a construct panel shows vector fragment as its first rectangle. Vector fragment is recipient plasmid, which is PBR322 in our case. So let's open this molecule and we want to cleave it at the BAMH1 site to linearize it. So at right now, the nucleotide sequence is depicted by X's, but as soon as you cut it at BAMH1 site by just clicking it, all the X's will convert into nucleotide, actual nucleotide sequences. And here you see the BAMH1 site, GGA, PCC, and BAMH1 cuts after the first G. Similarly, at the 3' end, GGA, TCC. So we already cut PBR322 by BAMH1. Now let's get the recipient uh, donor fragment by cutting TDL10. So here we want to cut by BAMH1, which is a double cutter. So let's get rid of the unique sites and cut this plasmid at both BAMH1 sites. This is the first site. Now the critical thing is press shift when you click on the second BAMH1 site because this program processes serial cleavage in the clockwise direction. Now you can go down and hit ligate which will open a text pane of the ligated molecule. 4591 base pairs is the size of mo new molecule. Let's get rid of the construction window and now make a graphics map of the ligated molecule. Essentially it's the PBR322 which, re which has received an insert from TDL10 plasmid. This has an insert from TDL10 plasmid which contains gene X. So let's compare it with both the parent plasmid. You can see in PBR322 that there is a TED gene from 86 to 1276 base pairs which is missing in the new construct where TED gene is split by an insert from TDL10 vector containing gene X. Now that the entire TED gene sequence has changed, the program doesn't recognize it at split, as split TED gene, it totally disregards it. So all we are left with is an insert from TDL10. So that's one noticeable difference. Let's see what happens to the size. Whether our construct is increased in size by the right measure or not. So I'll first measure the size of our insert which can be gotten by, so one BAMH1 site is at 2011 base pairs, other at 1781 base pair. All we need to do is subtract 1781 from 2011 to get the size of our insert. So this comes out comes out to be 230 base pairs. Now let's see whether PPR322 has increased by 230 base pairs. So PPR322 size is 4361 base pairs. Let's add 230 base pairs to it.
So it comes out to be 4591 base pairs. That is what our insert looks like. So let's get rid of our Excel sheet. And let's do a virtual DNA gel electrophoresis. We'll run restriction digests of our new construct and one of our parent plasmids, which is TDL10. To do virtual gel electrophoresis, you need to click open virtual cut window at the top panel, which will open a new window where you can select your molecule of interest. Let's say it's TDL10. On the left side of the panel, you will see a choice of enzymes. Let's say we cut with BAM H1. It will lead to two fragments. 2053 will be the bigger fragment and 230 base pairs will be the smaller fragment. On the right panel, you can also see how both the fragments will look like against a molecular ladder. Now we can select a different molecule which is our new construct and again a cut by BAM H1 will lead to two fragments the larger one being 4361 base pairs and a smaller one being 230 base pairs and this is how it will look like so this is how you can run virtual gels